Hi there. Well, this is the uh, final video in the building of my uh, little Stuart S50. And in this video, I'll show you some of the painting, um, the build, and hopefully a test with steam. So it'll become a proper steam engine. So, see you in a bit. Well, as you can see, I've already started painting the castings. And uh, in preparation, what I did um, was to use some, uh, I think it was 240 or 250 grit, wet, wet and dry um, on the casting and that highlighted quite a few imperfections. So what I did then was to use some car body filler to fill in those imperfections. Then I used the um, wet and dry yet again in dry form um, just to rub all that down. And then I uh, repeated the process yet again to get rid of any other minor imperfections. So um, it, it's come up pretty well actually. And after that I used this Acid 8, this Upol Acid 8. I got that from Halfords. Likewise the filler. And um, that seems to have really good adhesion on the cast iron. And I, I've got a better result with that than I did with a, a test with some standard... Uh, grey primer so I'm, I'm quite happy with that um, so uh, in terms of colours um, as you can see I've already started painting um, green for the top of the base and uh, red for the flywheel now I'm using Humbrol and it's Humbrol enamel and um, the actual green is Brunswick green and the red is uh, actually called crimson, so it's number 20. Both gloss. And uh, round the edge I'll uh, do that as black. Now, um, for the flywheel, I've uh, painted that with a brush, hand painted. Uh, but I'm spray painting the, the base. Uh, this is only partially done, uh, it needs quite a few more coats. But what I did was... Um, thin out the enamel um, using this uh, thinner uh, so it's a 50-50 mix I've used and uh, it seems to be going okay at the moment and uh, this is the little compressor I use uh, for the spray painting with this airbrush and uh, you, you can get these all over the internet it's uh, a model AS186 I also use it uh, for my uh, wood turning as well. Uh, quite a nice little uh, machine and it's got its own tank here um, so the compressor doesn't run all the time. Uh, it'll build pressure up in the tank and then run off tank pressure uh, nice and quietly. Okay, so in between coats of paint, I thought I'd have a go at uh, the lagging. Now, Tubal Kane's diagram, the dimensions on that differ quite uh, a bit to the diagram uh, dimensions uh, that come with the kit. And having compared the two, I decided to go pretty much with Tubal Kane's, with a, a slight change um, in uh, the distance uh, of these from the edge. I moved these in a bit, I think. Uh, from what I remember. Anyway, I, I made a, a template and made sure that that uh, fitted okay around the cylinder. Also mindful of the fact that when I drilled the holes, which are 1.8 millimeters in diameter, um, I didn't go into the cylinder. Um, I think it's 5 millimeters from the outside edge to the inside of the cylinder, so I drilled to a maximum of uh, 4 millimeters. This is slightly different, these two holes are drilled 5mm uh, in depth. Now I've not got uh, an 8BA tap at the moment, so um, I'll have to tap these once I receive uh, the taps in the post. Um, but anyway, it's looking 
reasonable so far. Well the painting seems to have turned out okay. I put some masking tape around the green and spray painted uh, the black base and it seems to have worked out pretty well. So the next step is to get this graphite yarn uh, around this piston groove or in the piston groove. Now I've put some WD-40 on it. I might put a slightly heavier oil on, I don't know. Um, but then it's a matter of fiddling around and trying to get it into the cylinder. Uh, so I'll do that off camera and uh, then I'll be able to start assembling it. Well I thought reassembly would have been an absolute doddle but it wasn't. Um, I had a real problem with cylinder alignment and with the um, piston on full stroke the uh, crosshead was catching the bottom rails. Now bearing in mind I think that, that you should have about a, th a thou gap right across the bottom and it, it took me ages checking out and trying to investigate the problem and eventually I realised that um, when I first assembled the cylinder and the cover I actually marked the position of the cover against the cylinder and I put two little punch marks at the bottom I don't know whether you can see those there uh, just to make sure that on reassembly I got the cover in exactly the same position as it was on the cylinder now I forgot to do that so the cover was turned round um, probably about I don't know 180 degrees so that actually meant that any um, error uh, in relation to the centre hole, uh, even if it's out about by a thou, that error would be amplified right across to the end of the crosshead. And that was the problem. Um, and the error was forcing the crosshead down uh, onto the rails. So anyway, I, I sorted that problem. Um, so it now turns very nicely. Um, the other issue I had uh, was in relation to the um, gland packing. I just found that very awkward. But I just, it's probably just one of those things. Um, but anyway, um, we'll give it another test on air. So that runs ever so smoothly. Um, so hopefully um, in a few days time uh, I might get the opportunity to uh, christen it using some steam. So fingers crossed. So Pete has uh, very kindly brought his boiler around and uh, he's hooked it all up and there's uh, 25 pound of steam in there apparently. So let's see how we get on. Hey! Well that runs very smooth, very happy with that.
Well, I must say that it was an absolutely fantastic learning experience and it really got me to uh, know my uh, mini lathe and mini mill a lot better. And it really got me out of my comfort zone, getting me to do things I, I would never imagined I, I could do uh, on, on these uh, little machines. Um, one area I found um, that there was quite a lot of parting off needed and that's an area I've really struggled with in the past. And I, eventually, I eventually found out that um, using a thin high speed steel tool sort of worked best for me. And, uh, that's the tool. I have tried other ones. Um, tried that before. Uh, found that quite difficult to uh, to use, to be honest. Uh, but the thin high-speed steel tool uh, definitely seems to work better for me. Um, I also found the rot rotary table absolutely uh, invaluable, and to be able to um, accurately drill holes in the cylinder covers and the cylinder uh, was was brilliant. Um, Really, really satisfying to use that. Um, what I found most difficult, I suppose, was um, drilling the hole in the far end of the valve chest. So just in there. So it's a blind hole, or, or it should be a blind hole. And uh, I think where I went wrong was I didn't um, have the inside perfectly flat before starting to drill through. Um, so next time I, I, I try that I'll, uh, I'll make sure it is flat. Well, um, it's my first attempt at making a little um, stationary steam engine and um, it was really, really satisfying uh, to actually make something that works first time. Um, also after testing the little S50 uh, Pete rigged up his uh, little 10H um, directly to the boiler and then connected my little S50 to the exhaust outlet and uh, believe it or not b both ran uh, extremely well so I'll show you a little um, clip of that right at the end of the video. Um, but finally um, I'd like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice provided. It really um, is very very much appreciated and in particular uh, Pete for uh, the help and advice he's provided and uh, bringing over his uh, boiler for me to uh, test on live steam. So I can't thank Pete enough aka uh, model steamers aka gas mantle. So I hope you like the series and uh, I hope to see you later. Oh and by the way um, my next model I'm going to make is going to be the Stuart 10V. So see you later.